happy Monday, folks. We're, we're getting a little, we're getting started just a little late, a little, a little delayed today. Got a little bit of scheduling stuff going on here. But hello. Uh, it is November. It's already November. Can you even believe it? What? It's already November. Hey, everybody. Oof. We're going to do weird things here in just a few minutes. Andrew will join us here. He's going to kind of hit the ground running a little bit. Yeah. We got to hit our, we got to hit a window. We got windowed recordings today. How's everybody's Halloween? Any good? What's, uh, uh, did you get any tricks or no? Did you get any treats this year, Brian? And what was your favorite Halloween treat? Uh, going out, walking around with the kids. It was gorgeous. And, mm. uh, uh. Having it only feel slightly weird to, you know, take candy from strangers. <laughs> that was kind of great. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, uh, so I do, I go to a bar trivia thing every week. And so last week, uh, it was like Halloween edition. And so the host, she's a great host. She brought a bunch of candy. And so I was hanging out afterwards, finishing up my beer. And she was like, hey, do you want this? I brought a lot and nobody took me. <laughs> and so I ended up getting like a half a bag of candy from her. And then... I went to a small Halloween thing on Saturday um, and they were like, it, it, there was like four people in total there. And they were like, well, we weren't sure what everybody wants. So we went and we bought those val those little variety packs, you know, of chips, you know? Right. Uh, they bought three of those and they said, hey, we, we don't eat any of these. Can you take all of them? So, right. so now I have four bags of variety chips uh, at home. I, I like... I like made bank. I cashed out on Halloween <laughs> this year. Oh, that that and two different variety packs, different flavor variety packs of White Claw went home with me. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, it's it's all treats. It's treats, treats, treats a ween. Hollow hollow treats. Hmm, something like that. Uh, over at the Castillo home. Uh, hold on. Uh. No, take your time. Uh, we'll get started here in, in, in a little bit. In a little, little bit. Uh, yeah, I got the new... These will not be my pick, probably as I'll describe them, but I got the new Apple AirPods that they just released. The, the threes or whatever. <clears throat> uh, they're cool in that, you know, they've got, they've got more bass. They have like an extra hour of battery life and six more more in the charger case and uh it's sweat and water resistant but you know what they did because it's apple they always do this they made them a little bigger and now they don't fit in my ears oh, well. boo. I know. it's funny the uh the old airpods you would tap on them you could just tap anywhere to do like commands and stuff and uh, uh with these new ones and i think it's because they expect you to uh, to like kind of touch them and readjust them all the time. Yeah. Um, they make it so you have to like pinch and click it. Um, speaking of pitching and clicking, is that one Andrew Main I hear making their way? Hello, peoples. Hey, Andrew. We were just talking about AirPods and the weekend and Halloween. You do any fun Halloween things while we get you set up here? Oh yeah, I did a. Uh, uh, we have over where I live in Burbank, right next to Toluca Lake. There's this area like like that's like where Bob Hope had his you know, zillion dollar house and a lot of really fancy houses. And people go all out like with like like with animatronics and stuff. And it was it was like Mardi Gras. It was just packed shoulder to shoulder, police helicopter overhead. Wow. Um, it was insane with the number of people there. Let me like see if I can pull some photos up just to show real quick. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, a few a few years ago, I went to I spent Halloween downtown. Some fr a couple of friends and I went downtown down Sixth Street. Ooh, holy cow! Whoa! Okay, that's that's a giant pumpkin that's as large as the house. It's a two story house. Wow, it's uh, it's an inflatable, right? It's got to be right. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that'd be amazing if it was a real pumpkin. <laughs> you know, like lasers and stuff. I mean, just just. Wow. 
insane just like like the degree that people went there and so you know everybody sort of drove from all around to go check it out wow. at but hollywood my magic favorite, man my favorite was somebody actually in burbank did a uh is that a talk show set? they live oh no it's 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 they live and so they have like the, the it's hard to see here but let me see if i got a close-up shot like oh, oh oh that's great that's really cool and then what was also great was like they did rowdy piper <laughs> next to it and so i was like <laughs> i'm like this is i want to know who these people are this is awesome <laughs> Very that's cool. awesome all righty um let's see here how are you doing andrew can i can i hear you a little fantastic okay. i'm gonna talk uh out my mouth and keep talking until bryce tells me until the real boss of the show tells me that uh i can stop talking nobody's hearing any illusions about who runs this operation yeah. right. <laughs> i think i think we're good there Oop. Okay, yeah, I think that works. You doing good, Bry? Yeah. You guys want to jump right in? So we got no Justin today. He's out in Virginia. He's uh, seeing if Who? if it really is for lovers or not. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> All right, then uh, uh, if you're good to go, Andrew, I'll count you in. Already. All right, here we go in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. <clears throat> I'll be fine, everybody. I'm overcoming. Uh, <laughs> Scenario one involves a biocontagion. <laughs> it was going to be good. I was at a party Saturday and talked a lot. And then, then Halloween, all that fog machine juice. It's not supposed to drink it, turns out. Who yeah. knew? And you definitely shouldn't so, vape with uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you tell me. So this is the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy. So uh, that's all that matters is that's here right. right now. All it's ever Gentlemen, been. I, I want to talk about, I think, a, I think in retrospect, it, it was it was an amusing story, but I think it's going to be kind of a bigger story. And that is uh, this new startup that came out of nowhere, Meta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I saw that apparently their logo uh, bears a strong resemblance to one that has already been trademarked. Yeah, it does look like oh, something. What is what is that? That looks uh, I don't know. I'll have to find it. But there's there's basically some other company that that uh, it's like a twisted uh like infinite. Yeah, symbol. It's like in healthcare, I think I may have seen that, you know, but. I, you know, listen, they've got more money than God, you know, they can remember when the iPhone, like, well, some companies like, well, we're the iPhone. Yeah. It was like was a like, Cisco device. Yeah. Like we're going to take out our checkbook and we're going to see how long you hold on to that idea. Right. And then, then, you know, you're the iPhone. <laughs> well, the, uh, but the scuttlebutt the, is now that they're working on a watch. They're, yep. The, yep. 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 A camera in it. So it, it brings up a very interesting question is there Zuckerberg clearly loved like Snow Crash and Ready Player One. The they bought Oculus early on because he was very excited and he saw very forward thinking about where he thinks the future of things were going to go. And he, he when he talks about the metaverse, uh, I think, you know, he's imagining everything you know i mean connecting everything through there which is probably a very you know ready player one takes place in this dystopian where one person controls everything snow crash cream takes place in dystopia where nobody controls everything uh take your pick but it is they're serious they're they're really really serious about where they want to go with this i'm curious about your thoughts uh i mean look um hmm there are fundamental design aspects to VR full stop that have yet to be resolved. Uh, Long-term comfort, the ability to not look dorky to outsiders while you're doing it, um, the ability to put it on your face, leave it on your face, uh, and switch over comfortably to augmented reality and not feel the need when you get behind the wheel of a car to bother to take off your, your glasses. We are pretty freaking far from all of these things. And so... Um, in, the, in, the, in the meantime, um, 
the, uh, let me just say that 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 all the sales pitch I've seen looks awfully familiar. Now, keep in mind, I love this song. We've been singing it for 30 years now, uh, but uh, sure is familiar. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, but I, I don't, we haven't had a trillion dollar player with this much resources say this is our identity now this is what we're doing we've had smaller and, and they have oculus and you know we i i love the quest i think the quest is a, is, is a great platform and i'm not a facebook user but i am because of my quest and the idea that they're going to be throwing they just bought supernatural that that fitness game which seems like crazy overpriced and looks like some version of hell for to be trapped in those landscapes and trying to do cardio boxing but they just bought them, you know, they're, they're making this big, big, big play for something big. And, um, yeah, I mean, we can have a wait and see thing, but I'm like, they're, they're making big bets. They, now they have to bigger be bigger than anybody's ever made. They have to be banking a long term, even past VR into, you know, probably what will be 10 or 20 years before we have like augmented reality that is consumer ready for everybody. I mean, that that is the only way I kind of see Facebook or now Meta doing what they're doing, what they've announced, and not feeling and not walking into it knowing that like their reputation is bad right now when a lot of people they have a lot of competition in their services and the only thing that they can kind of compete on is that they have all of this money to to do this. So I, I can only assume that this is not even close to a today thing, but they are cloistering to try to, I don't know, aim to be another social layer on the world, but that won't be for decades. That really won't be for decades until the technology shrinks. And oh, maybe is Facebook even around still then? Or well, Meta, I, 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 I think it'll be sooner and I think that some form of it will certainly be around. Like, I think we're at a point where I, be, I may sound incredibly naive when we're doing this 10 years from now, but <laughs> I think that we're, and we are guys, I'm sorry, you have no choice. Um, I think that we're at a point where there's certain companies are just, that are going to take forever to go away, even if they're in decline, when they reach a certain level of capitalization and, and you have, they have that much money and resources that they can buy entirely new industries to keep them, sustain themselves. So I think there's going to be some form of it, whatever happens. I... I'll, I'll simplify this. Like, like my concern is I love the fact that like there's web VR that you can build apps in VR in that are browser based. Nobody does them. Barely right. people are barely even realize that that's there. If we want to have this open web and the real web, the real metaverse, really, whatever, like that's what we have to have. We have to embrace that. And we're not doing that. And I see right now what Facebook is, Facebook's trying to do, I think, to VR in a sense, what Microsoft wanted to do to the web in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, which is like, you know, like, well, if we have it, we lock it, we build it on top of Internet Explorer, and we use all these plugins and all these other applications that only work with our thing, then we are the web. Didn't work out that way, but, you know. Well, yeah, I, I find myself truly believing that... Truly believing you're right, Andrew, eventually Zeno's arrow is going to hit its target. But, um, you know, I'm going on 30 years of singing this song. And, you know, way back to the early 90s when it's like HTML's out, uh, VRML is in, and you're going to physically go to the, all these places. But, and um, But, Brian, you have an Oculus. You have a Riff. I, I do. You have, I do. You have I a do. Vive. You I have, have these I, devices now. Co correct, correct. So, uh, and and I've bought every iteration, and Zeno Zero has gotten closer and closer and closer to actually touching the target, but it still ain't touched the target. So, it's just... Um, uh, uh, well, define the target. Define the target. Uh, uh, um, actually being what's pitched. Every time there's that gap, and yeah, the gap between what's pitched and what the reality is I does get smaller. But he's pitching, hey, let's we're going to be doing you know more virtual meetings inside of here. He's pitching, he's pitching the fun, the fun side of it, which is it's been delivered. We hang out, you know, when we all get together, we play stuff and like you know, a, a, we use our Oculus to play games together. And now he's pitching this office space environment, which sounds creepy and weird to me. But is that are you negative on that? 
Um, I, I can't get big screen to work right. It's been frustrating and annoying. And this is at the height of the pandemic at a time when all I wanted desperately more than anything is to feel like I'm in the same room with other people. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't work. It was all beta. Uh, the closest thing that did come to working was Demio. And even then I can't get anybody to play Demio with me to save my life. Um, it's that it's just an it's just enough of a thing now mm -hmm. that that yeah there, there there was a hot moment where we were all playing but but if i put on my oculus right now uh, there ain't going to be none of my friends on there so i took a job i'm sorry brian I, well no, no no and that's just it we all have that reality and that and that's yeah. that's what i want to point out is is this if is, you're not this living with not... the vr goggles in your face there's a that's a barrier like there are, right I, like what are like if we can broadly think what are the barriers between today and the metaverse it's got to be that like the hardware is kind of is is a barrier to entry there's a price uh, there's price levels there's uh, accessibility things not to mention you've you've got ultimately a found a foundation well, uh, yeah yeah and i think that i mean we we have a lot like i think uh uh, William Gibson would probably talk, would look at what we're doing right now and argue this was part of the metaverse. Literally, we're, I'm looking at our faces on a virtual thing. We have mm. a virtual audience. We're all connecting. Them. The thing that's not different is it's not 6DOF. You know, we're not watching it through goggles, but we are completely connected through there. And so, it, it, and the future comes in ways that you don't predict. You know, it's like water. You think, oh, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want it to look like this, like it's just going to fill in the things where it needs to fill in. Right. right. Well, and I think to uh, Brian's point, uh, I guess to restate my point, um, with a cell phone, it is more likely that cell phone will be on everybody than not on mm -hmm. them. Even as they sleep, they will have it nearby or whatever. Yeah. Um, that is nowhere near the case with the goggles. The goggles are. Well, I don't, and I don't. And 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 until that's the barrier. That's uh, you were asking. When does when does the arrow hit the target? Is when it's more likely that somebody is uh, ready to take your call uh, than not. But yeah, mm -hmm. I see it completely different. Like, I don't see it as, oh, then I can always do my goggles. I see like, oh, I'm on my phone doing a thing. And then I get home and I put on my goggles and the same thing I did on my phone, I'm now doing in my goggles. I see it as, is not, I, I'm, you know, I'm walking around the goggles all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have a, like, I'm, gonna, I'm in front of a desktop now. I'm gonna have a bigger experience. Then I'll go sit on the couch and I'll be on my iPad. Uh -huh. And then if I'm out a house, this, so I think that, I think it's all going to be degrees. I don't see it as this, the day that we're all in there VR, I don't think that ever happens. I, uh, uh, well, I guess um, uh, the, the moment that the arrow hits the target is when you don't use another form of communication to set up an intent to be on the other form. For example, when I, when I mm -hmm. was a kid, we had these, amazing, you know, walkie talkies straight out of stranger things. And it was awesome. But if I wanted to talk to one of my friends, I would call them on the phone and then we would agree to go hop on the walkie talkie. Um, that's exactly what our thing with VR is. VR never starts with just we're on VR. It's we use another mode of com communication that is ubiquitous, that is natural, that is fully integrated into our daily lives, and then say, hey, let's go do the novel thing. But I will say, you know, I, I know, like, I personally am not in the Facebook ecosystem, but if you were in the Facebook ecosystem, that would already exist, right? You would have Instagram, you'd have WhatsApp, you'd have Facebook. All of that does kind of tie into Oculus, uh, uh, and they're they're actually getting rid of the oculus name i believe but um like that that is the thing that facebook has is that there is at least on on a on a i don't know a business level those services are connected right i go to instagram and it's like hey this is going to become facebook messenger kind of like they you can tell that they want to do that but you still have the, i i know for me you still have the facebook problem in that it's facebook and you know ult ultimately i think the thing the thing that i think will keep meta from being the company to do this is much in the same way that we don't have like a great competitor to the quest 2 yet like the quest is a great device so why aren't there more out there is it because they're subsidized the costs are not right you know that only facebook can take the hit on the cost is it that the technology still isn't what? miniaturized enough is it is, is it that everybody's waiting for ar is it that people are waiting for apple um and those are a lot of questions. I, I mean, I don't. Okay. Yeah. What's up? 
you know, a couple well, a couple two things one is i i i know the sales have been phenomenal and i know that like i think in in even the, the limited component point that they think that they're selling out of these things they're hard to get i think there'd be what i think there's you know there's a tremendous amount of demand uh brian i'd say like you know their their plan is to integrate like messenger into it and like you can already connect your phone into it and have your phone pop up updates and stuff but i think their goal is like you pop the thing on and you can say hey send a text message to brian and say this like that's in the works so like they want to in theory make it that cohesive thing and now they're de they're supposedly decoupling the facebook account for oculus so it's its own experience but they trust that I you'll get pulled back in i don't believe that. I, I, I don't I, believe that. I, guess, I think that i saw i did see what? that that they I saw that they said you won't need a Facebook account, but I know that whatever oh. account you will need will have to authenticate or tie to a Facebook account. Oh, no, account. I, I will tell you why they're doing it. I will tell you, they, I absolutely believe it 100%. Uh, they did a press release, a little release announcement uh, a couple weeks ago explaining that used to, they used to count if you, you would have to, if they knew you were on Instagram and they knew the same person was on Facebook, they called, they considered you a single consumer. Now for advertising purposes, if you don't join your accounts, they're counting you twice so they can sell you twice to advertisers and we can say oh we reach this many people right so by disconnecting you from facebook in that regard they can say oh yeah no this person has a face has an oculus account this person has a facebook account and it's the same person but they they're actually it's they're incentivized to do this now yeah yeah i guess uh let me let me flip everything uh uh 180 here uh, what is new about this? And I'm speaking from a place of ignorance, uh, since I, I didn't see the latest presentation outside of the couple of clips here or there that looked uh, hilariously stilted. Um, what is the new pitch that is different from the pitch of two years ago that is different, uh, from the pitch of seven years ago? Uh, I mean, a number of the things they show are things that are there, the software that's there, softwares in beta, he goes and shows horizons, you know, their, their environment for interacting. It's, a, it's, a, it's there. It's not a thing that's going to come in two years. It's a thing that they're beta testing. I've tested it. I've been interacting it. Their office environment stuff, the, the virtual keyboard stuff I have, I've been doing this. So it's not, it's not a vaporware thing. It's like, here's this platform that we're doing right now, and you can start now. Hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, so, so like, for example, the uh, virtual keyboard stuff, um, uh, do, do you yeah. like it more than a re uh, regular keyboard? Oh, it's, it sucks. It's garbage. Oh, okay. it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's still, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, you're looking down. I liked the idea. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's, I, I don't know. I look at their virtual office stuff and I don't know that I buy into this, but I know that they're serious and they're putting money into it and they're like, the certain parts of their they were doing their their facebook concert stuff and the set then the platform sucked and i'm like this sucks because they have to be building something else and then they announced horizons i'm like ah now i get it you know and they're throwing and there've never been more people more software engineers and developers working on this than any point in history whether yeah, or not it's going to work I, and we're going to love it is something different so if you ask me what's different the commit the commitment i i guess i guess yeah that's the that's the thing is i i do believe uh, today and I did believe last year and I did believe five years ago and I did did believe 15 years ago you know um uh I mean in concrete terms uh within the next 365 days are any of the three of us going to be buying a new headset uh I I probably won't uh, if, if there's I mean if there's new hardware <laughs> I mean I'm I'm a sucker but I mean, but I would say that, like, you had, uh -huh. when we were, you know, when we were kids and we looked at the communicator in Star Trek, or we looked at these things, we thought these things were really cool, and we wanted them, but you couldn't have them. Then the cell phone came along, which was kind of cool, but then, you know, remember, I mean, Brian, you're like me, like, how many crappy PDAs did we buy in the 90s because we really wanted an iPhone? But right. nobody had, it didn't, it wasn't possible yet, but I have, I, I, also, had had PDAs. I, had, I also had PDAs. Yeah, no, no, no. My my Casio E one hundred. I was uh, that ran on Windows CE. Yeah. At a Sony mm -hmm. Clie. At a Sony Clie. Yeah, Windows CE, folks. Mm -hmm. Then at some point, the technology, the 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 hardware caught up to what we wanted to do, and you realized, okay, we can make these things happen. And now we're at the point where the hardware's caught up pretty well. Like 
there's well, obviously room for improvement. We're, we're, we're iPhone one days with VR. We're like, oh, this is amazing. Like, well, then we're going to see it's coming. Like, oh, that was garbage. How do I look through the screen door at these blocky pixels and not want to scratch my eyes out? But we've had, we hit, I think we've hit that point now where you're like, oh, it's good. Like, I'll spend several hours in VR and I'm happy with it. And not to say it solved everybody. And I think that's the hardware it oh. took. It took us, we didn't get the hardware thing done until four years ago and really mobile hardware until three, two years ago. It's so new, so new right now. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my skepticism around this isn't the, I mean, I agree that eventually given a long enough time, the empire will fall. There will be some social layer on top of, of, of the, you know, whether it's a metaverse or whatever we want to call it. My, my skepticism comes a little bit from how how still early it is for VR for AR, and and I think mm, I I just I <laughs> this is a very emotional and personal take, but I just don't like Facebook. Yeah, and and, I, I, and ultimately, and, and, and but, I, and, but 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 that, I do have that, no. That I, is I, a I, legitimate I, factor that 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 weighs in with me as well. I, and I my, my reasoning is more than is more than that. It's that we aren't seeing uh, to go back to this we aren't seeing a lot of strong comp- competition for the quest and we are only talking about one company really trying to put a lot of effort and time and money into building the metaverse and if these ideas will bear out if they're great then why when then i think the momentum will come when we see oh my gosh this is you know this is HTC's version of the quest this is Valve's version of the quest this is Apple's version of the quest or you know, this is that, like part like, of it. It, it, it. That that's just the thing. Is like the no, the, yeah. It is there? There would be had, more signals, I think, from other. Competitors. Well, five years ago, remember we had a bubble. We had a mini VR bubble, and we had all this excitement <laughs> over VR. There was a ton of venture capital thrown in, and the hardware wasn't there. And I remember, I, I, I uh-huh. remember going to like startups and talking to people like, "Oh, it's it's happening," and I'm like, "How do you like?" Oh, I'm like, you know, I've talked to someone running a, working at a startup, and they're like. I'm like, no, like your hardware's not yet. And I'm like, oh yeah, well look at cardboard. Like, you know, the number of people next year that are gonna have VR capable devices is gonna be with the pixels gonna be like, you know, 80 million people. I'm like, I've had the cardboard. I had it when it was a USC project before, you know, Google claimed it as their own and play it. It's fun. It's a toy for two minutes and then nobody wants to do it. But the there was so much money spent that was dumb money that then people are now like, oh, we don't know. And so like, it's it's harder to do a VR company right now because Right, of that bubble. I, I agree. That that that's all to say that like I bet we will get a metaverse, and I don't necessarily know that Facebook being the first one to try to push their way through and to dominate that space is is going to be the one to do it. I I bet we will, mm. and uh, I hope it's not Facebook because I would like to get a quest that does not have Facebook fingerprints on it. I would like to see what a metaverse looks like that doesn't have Facebook fingerprints on it, and ultimately. Like that's going, you know, at, for me, that's not for everybody. You know, internationally, Facebook has a lot of users in in the U.S. Facebook has a lot of users, but I'm I don't think I'll ever get over that hurdle. And I would I, I would hope that we see over the next few years, other companies also take a swing at this so that it's not Facebook running the Ready Player One of ours. You, you know, I wonder I wonder if a necessary ingredient to make this a, a true success would be. Like let Meta spend all of the the money, develop all of the hardware or whatever. Let the hacker community, you know, break it in all the right ways, and then um, let it be the dark web or whatever. Like like let it be completely, uh, 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 you know, you know, more like uh, the Neil Stevenson novel than uh, uh, than Ready Player One. Um, I bet, I mean, I think you'll convince That'll get people excited people. to develop for it, Brian. I think that that's, that's when I, I think, yeah, that's when people are going to be excited when it's not, oh, it's we've made a bigger walled garden. and Right. Right. And, and then you get into like, you know, is that an open protocol? Is it an open platform? Is it central, decentralized? Is it, you know, there, there's still, well, I, I mean... It, 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 we'll see how it all turns out. There's, it's so, it feels so far away that I, I couldn't have any idea what is and isn't possible. Um, yeah, you know. WebXR. If anybody's curious, look up WebXR. It's a great open format, and you can do really cool stuff in it right now. Oculus does support it, but it's more tolerate is more of what I would say. But I think that's that's going to be an exciting way because then yeah, it's, I it's, guess nobody owns it. Here's the ugly part that that. Mm, uh, what it appears is being sold 
by Zuckerberg is um, a Disneyland experience. And the metaverse is inherently a dangerous place. It's a place where real money can get stolen forever or real documents can get stolen forever. And if, if Zuckerberg is going to, with a straight face, say, well, that can't happen here, then that's not reality and that's not the, that's not the metaverse. And um, I think that's- Yeah, that's the, the blockchain. It, it, I mean, that's, that's, that's the core uh, uh, challenge that I'm seeing in terms of mm -hmm. my own excitement. How do you make it real? How do you make a metaverse that can get to the metal of how people compute today? and make it so that grandma doesn't get her social security card right, stolen. But, but you're right, right. like, like, a, tr like a true blockchain where you could be arrested and sent to real human jail for participating in an extortion scheme or in uh, like, like uh, uh, until, until, uh, until we have that level of consequences in reality, then it doesn't bear as much of a resemblance to the metaverse as, as I think is being presented. I don't. I don't know sometimes, Brian, if you're talking about your ideal or if you are a science fiction publisher telling an author <laughs> what they're going to have to do to, to, to make your story good. <laughs> I mean, it's the difference between somebody saying, yeah, I went skydiving once. And then and it's like, oh, really? Uh, how did you train? You're like, no, I didn't train. I put on the goggles and I leaned forward and I felt the wind. It was really exhilarating. It's like, well, then you didn't go skydiving. And and. If, yeah. if, if what you want to do is sell me the metaverse and it's like, uh, oh, I went to the metaverse once. Oh, how did you avoid the scammers? Did, did anybody try to trick you? And how much money did you lose the first four times you visited so-and-so place? Oh, I didn't lose any of those money. They were all credits uh, and they were immediately refunded. It's like, oh, no, you went to a Disney theme park. You didn't actually go to Marrakesh or whatever. You know, it's um, mm. like, 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 like there's consequences to, to real stuff. And none of this sounds like there are consequences. So none of this feels very, very real to me. Fair point. And, um, but, I, but I, but I understand if you're Facebook or meta, you want to, you want to steer as far away from that as possible. You know that you're on the, the, the cutting edge of a new technology and that is what new technologies tend to look like at first, right? Very open, very unguided. Um, and, if you're also selling VR devices and selling people on the idea today of it, then you kind of have to say, no, this is actually a consumer product and not a new and not a true new layer of of socializing, if that makes sense. Right. I mean, they, Facebook is not in the Marrakesh game. They are in the Disneyland game for this. And um, right. Uh, and, 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 and I, and I'm not for it necessarily, but, but, but in terms of just believing that this is a revolutionary new world, um, like, uh, Ultima online was a revolutionary new world because there was fraud. And when somebody lied to you and accepted your gold and gave you a fake deed to a boat that didn't exist, you really did lose all that, you know, um, uh, Eve online uh, is, is literally funding, uh, uh, according to some folks, literally funding terrorism. What they're doing is they're, they're right. going to off to black markets to buy ISK to, to money you know, laundering, basically. Exactly. Like, like that, those to me are the ugly undersides, uh, and also the proof that these are real places, uh, hmm. you, know, you know, the, the, the rise of the resistance, the greatest, greatest theme park adventure I've ever had uh, is not a real place. Uh, and, and I wouldn't use it as such. You know, Bill Gates, when he was critiquing Zuckerberg and Facebook, had made a comment where Zuckerberg described Facebook as a platform. Bill Gates says, in a real platform, you're not the one capturing all of the revenue. Where, because you look in, because his point of view is like Microsoft Windows, you know, a bank may run Windows, but they're not getting all the money the bank makes from having Windows and, you know, or hospital or industries and, and versus Facebook, where they're like, no, every every dollar that goes through the system, you know, we we get part of that. And and that is sort of a limiting factor because like, yeah, I don't, I don't I'm not going to want to build a bank inside that world. I'm not going to want to build a lending institution. I'm not going to want to build a lot of things because ultimately they own it mm. versus, you know, it's why, you know, 
there's so much exciting excitement right now in the blockchain space and everything else like this and, and this is how crazy it is do you do you guys know about the 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 hack last week for cream the 135 million dollar hack mm -mm. uh okay maybe broadly but not it, specifically it is 100 150 million dollars got sucked out of a uh a lending platform called cream and this was not the first time they've had a hack and it may have been irreparably lost okay if 130 million dollars was stolen from bank of america if 130 million dollars was stolen from some city bank account it would be news here in the crypto space it's very big news but it's so silent and it's so different we don't even think about that and these are this is this is just one of many many things and i'm not trying to say oh it's 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 early days people are figuring this stuff out you have very well-intentioned people you know writing smart contracts that are not that smart but I'm not knocking that but i'm like that's what's crazy is like there's this whole world going out there that's just not even in the mainstream news is aware of it's like early web and a lot like what you talked about is like we'll know it because we'll hear about really crazy stuff going on secondhand because right. the rest of the world doesn't realize no there's a whole thing going on in this well uh, and to get to get to that place right to get to the eve online you have to make an eve online that people want to play you know you have to make the game mm -hmm. that has an economy before people <laughs> treat the economy as like a money laundering scheme um and so it, it's a little it's it's a little chicken and egg right how do you convince people to get into a metaverse early, build for a metaverse, create these strange experiences, and also give them enough latitude to do something like that for news, headline-making um, events to occur. Because otherwise, is it just Facebook that's making all these experiences? Is, is, is Or and Meta, you know, or whoever the platform holder is. That's not terribly likely, right? You can't have one software developer being the be all end all of entertainment and uh you know office stuff and all of the other connections that they talk about here it, it, it would it would be a very bad presentation if facebook's pitch was all of this stuff is also our stuff um yep yeah because, and it kind of that kind of is well all right. Right. And and, and, and and just oh. just to clarify, I'm not, I'm not wishing for I'm not saying hooray for crime or whatever, but it does. <laughs> it, it does seem I, like <laughs> it does seem like the legitimacy of the platform is directly proportional to the ability to commit a real crime by using it. You know, or, it's mm. like, you know, that's, let's say the freedom you have on the platform. Right. For good or bad. Right. Like yeah. wire fraud had to be a new type of crime that was invented because of the technology or whatever. And and mm. if they're if it's not possible to commit a crime on it, then, <laughs> then it doesn't feel <laughs> very transformational. Yeah. Uh, I have I have an offer. All right. Let's Who hear wants to buy the gas rights for i don't know an eighty-seven thousand hectare piece of land 87. in south africa i mean that's, uh, that's a well, lot of land that that seems kind of far away Do, uh, uh uh is it is it is it hard to access or 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 is it um, it's is been it... kind of hard but like like um a little bit but you're you're natural you're looking for natural gas and yeah um i'll sell you the rights for a buck do you want them what we have one dollar i get all the rights I want no. $1. No, here. Can you make it, can you break can, a 20? No, can you break make, a 20? we can go have these. I got two quarters. Oh, he heck yeah. Can you break a 20? <laughs> That's 50 cents. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Down, it. down for it. Got it. All right. Got it. You ready, suckers? Boom. What? You ready, ready, suckers? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there, you, there's no natural gas here. Oh, I want some natural gas. I won your huh. buck. Ha ha ha. Do you well, we're stupid? only out 50 Don't cents. Yeah. Well, I guess 1950 I mean, cents. I still need that change, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, like we tapped the well. I'm your head engineer. Like, yeah, we tapped the well and uh, we did a big drill and there's, there's no natural. I mean, gas. is it, is, is there anything down in there? That's a lot of hectares of land. Did we check all of the ground? Did we see? Oh, I mean, there's like 10 billion cubic meters of helium. Oh, oh, and, oh no. Oh uh, no, that would be more valuable because helium is, is we don't we don't have any more of that. Yeah, yeah. But are you saying we just bought the wrong the wrong type of of uh, of like, rights? So, Wait, does you, somebody else have the rights to the helium? No, that, you got the gas rights. You bought the gas helium's rights. Helium's a gas. Oh, helium's yeah. a gas. Yeah. Well, so then, okay, that's good. Suck universe. it up. Let's go. Get the get the tanks. Let's go. Yeah. Shunk. So uh, what it, you'll, you'll hear the headlines like we're running out of helium and, it, and it's one of these like 
it's one of these yes but and the buts more important than the yes is that uh he, you know, like prices of helium, we talked about before, like there was a national helium reserve back when, you know, the Navy was going to need airships and stuff. And we kept this and we'd, we'd put it on the market, which kind of kept, kept prices sort of stable. But the and we bought it up and which we kept the, kept the price sort of artificially high. But then um, the problem is, is that like helium is a byproduct. If you have a natural gas well, good chance you probably have helium in there, too. Like we find these things near each other, right? And like. Helium is a thing that you find when you're generally looking for other things. Like they were looking for natural gas and they found helium. I mean, a lot of hmm. helium, there's grades of helium, like in quality. Like if you want to use it for, you know, medical, there's, you know, different degrees in it. But we have this, oh, we're running out of helium. Technically, we're actually not because helium is still being produced at the Earth's core and just working its way up. In fact, we've, we think we've discovered a new mineral that like actually can form at extreme pressure and stuff that has helium, like iron, oxygen, helium or something. It's just like crazy. But the point is is like there there's it's not a huge it's the total market is for like 10 billion dollars for helium globally okay. um which is a lot but it's not as big as other things and if you have natural gas that's an even bigger well, market and, uh is is it not true it, that uh uh that once once we you know just knock out that that fusion problem we're going to be able to generate helium. <laughs> or... It's going to be really expensive helium. Okay, it'll All right. be mm -hmm. it'll it'll be it'll be. It's a yes, but there's a yes, but to that. It sounds like yeah. Then then your helium's going to go to like a hundred thousand dollars per cubic meter when you're trying to you know because you, you think you have to think about the the when you're using fusion and you're just like doing beryllium or what there's not but uh or whatever you're going to be doing but. There is, it's one of these things we talk about, like people will go like, there was, remember, we were supposed to be out of oil right now. And that was people got confused by proven reserves versus, you know, what we thought theorized oil reserves. And people like, oh, you know, we run out of oil because there's only this much proven reserves. It's like, yeah, it's only where we spent the money to drill. And also, you know, they're like, yeah, but they all, was, what about it's oil here? Oh, it's hard to get to, you can't get it. And then some madman and, and, from like Texarkana or whatever. But, uh, by the way, that, that also doesn't count the uh, development of alternatives to oil as well, that all of a sudden the oil that you do have becomes suddenly, you know, super cheap uh, compared to it's much easier to frack and take liquid natural gas and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was, you know, that was like the fracking revolution all of a sudden opened up a lot of this and, and we found out that there were bigger exploits and then, you know, the things that we were able to get to. And so... Yeah, that changed things. Like we were able to, we can like really. You don't hear that we're going to run out of oil thing anymore. Which, you know, if you asked anybody twenty years ago, like, hey, do you think in twenty twenty one that the idea that people were going to be worried about worried about you know, that we would no longer worry about running out of oil? And be like, oh no, we'll be out. And it's like, no, guess what? Mm -hmm. There's way more. Uh, I certainly dump a lot of it every every few years. I rethink about this fact, uh, and just in case nobody heard it last time. Uh, I want to say it was a Matt Ridley quote that that humans have never, ever, not even once ever run out of a non-renewable resource. The only resources we've ever run out of have been renewable resources that we over farmed, uh, whether they're trees yeah. or creatures or living things or whatever. Uh, non-renewable resources, uh, once we get low enough on them, we freak out and we raise the price and we figure out other ways to do things. And suddenly something that was very rare and valuable, like for example, uh, example uh, aluminum, used to be more valuable than gold, then a process to create very cheap aluminum suddenly made it very easy. Yeah, and it's, and this, I, you know, I want to bring up this article, say so like, yeah, we just found this. And there aren't, there's, it's not like there's been a lot of effort to go find, if you have the resources to extract helium, you're going to go extract, you're going to extract natural gas instead. You're not going to go seek it out. You know, if you have it as a byproduct, then you you put it out there. But the amount of helium that actually gets just loud off into our atmosphere in the natural gas extraction pro pro process is actually huge. It's huge. But anyhow, but there is finite amount, but like it's finite amount that might affect us in a year million. Right. By which time so I'm going to guess it will have come up with a, uh, far cheaper, superior ways to make latex float in bubbles. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> than, than yeah. helium. What, was there was there a development with helium um, that 
Oh, uh, Brent it, brought this up? No, uh, just that they found a crap ton of it in yeah. South yeah, Africa. This, 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 and yeah, we continue to, to, to find lots of Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I did see this article about them striking, quote, new gold, but uh, I, I wasn't sure if there was more than that. Okay. Well. Yeah. And there, the I uh, like they do the description of like how much helium this is in the terms of balloons. That's enough to fill 1.4 trillion party balloons. <laughs> wow. Okay. Because I'm gonna call Party City. Turn them back. Turn the lights back on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because it's it's the hysteria. Like you go read a Hacker News thread, and people are like they should ban the sale of helium except for like medical uses or things like this. It's like I don't think you understand the problem. I don't think you understand that it's like it's actually that'll make it even more expensive because the problem is. is is that we were paying really low prices for it because it's artificial and nobody wants to go through the effort extracting it. And so if you're like, let's make it, let's have even smaller number of use cases for it. It's like, you're going to make it worse. Because, you know, people think like, oh, it's just like one room of helium left. No, there's a lot of helium. There's plenty of helium to go around. We all get Plus helium. also, just uh, don't guess, your... guess what we're going to start using instead of helium? I'll give you a hint. And it begins with the word Hindenburg. <laughs> yeah, go to get some YouTube videos to see the fun that can be. Well. Wow. That when that goes, that is loud. <laughs> <laughs> not not a good option, my yeah. opinion. Uh, gentlemen, do we want to do some picks? I've yeah. got a pick. I've got I've got a great pick. Um, if you have uh, Apple Arcade, you should go download this. It will be free for you. Um, if you don't, my guess is it will be on computers in the next couple of months because that's how a lot of these Apple Arcade games go. But um, I am recommending a new game called WordWeb, W-U-R-D-W-E-B. This is, I've only been playing this for like a day or so and I've lost many, many hours playing this. So it is a word game. It looks a lot like, it's. it, it plays a lot like Scrabble. It's like single player Scrabble, basically. Uh, you get words and you have to fit them out into a board. And what's What's really cool is that they have a lot of different variations, right? So they've got three different game modes. They've got a bunch of different word banks. So you can have like animal words. You can have work words. You can have, you know, sports words. Um, and then all sorts of variations. Oh, only give me long words. Oh, start, uh, uh, just put multiple words on the board for me to start with. D uh, pick a foreign language and use that foreign languages version oh, wow. of the pack. Yeah. Um, and they the other great thing about it because it's single player is they give you challenges so you get a set number of challenges every day hey do uh, uh do t place 25 words using the food and the food language pack or play three games on random or something and that really gives you a lot of opportunity to mess around with the different modes um and it it kind of gets you into the what i think like the big draw is the daily mode so like a lot of other games they have you know a daily mode of like everybody plays with this set of words or this board um and you spend as long as you need trying to fit as many possible words as you can onto this grid um and it's for me it's great i i love it i love this kind of thing of trying to fit words in solve puzzles and it's procedurally generated so you'll always have have you know, puzzles and stuff for you. I, I really dig this. Um, and if you are into word games um, and you've got Apple Arcade, it wouldn't cost you anything to try it out. Uh, so that's WordWeb. Heck yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I have a weird one that I, I can't stop listening to, but I'm not, I don't know if I'm having a very good time. Uh, oh. uh, it's it's called Dead <laughs> Dead Eyes. Have we talked about this? No. So, Is this uh, a podcast? Yeah, it's a podcast called I've heard about De this. Dead yeah. Eyes. Um Hi. Imagine cereal, yeah. but it's about one actor who's on a quest to find out why 20 years ago Tom Hanks fired him from a three-line part in Band of Brothers. His <laughs> lines were, coffee, sir? How about tea? Okay. Those were his lines. <laughs> and he had to go and and uh, and 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 uh, he got word back. No, sorry. Um, uh, 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 yeah, you didn't make the cut. He thinks you have dead eyes. And it's this oh. one year grudge that he's holding on to. And he's gotten far enough. And the more I listen to it, the more angry I get, because now he's at the point where he's talking to literally first actors, the people who would have been the ones who said these things to him. <laughs> and they're all like. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's a 20 year old show. <laughs> yes, and it's just like, and even if he did, and and, and he didn't. It, it sounds like Tom Hanks didn't say this to you. It sounds like some intermediary said 
something that probably doesn't fit. Like, like the this sounds are, very funny. What the hell are you doing? This sounds awful to listen to, but it sounds like the funniest concept for something. Like, like I am having more fun listening to you describe I, the displeasure of doing this than I will ever get out of listening to this. And I can't stop. He's got <laughs> he's got Janet from the Good Place on there. He's got Don Draper on there. Oh. Ira Glass shows up. It's it's I I and I'm like, what are all of you doing? What are you doing? Damon Lindelof in I, one of these episodes there. Oh my goodness. It's very. I don't know why I keep listening to it. <laughs> all right. Dead so. Eyes. You know, uh, he's uh, Connor Ratcliffe. Ratliff, um, he's this is guy like he's been like in comedy, upward citizen brigade, whatever. He's got a big history in comedy, and so this has become kind of a gimmick for him. Uh, but uh, do you know the other podcast he's done? Does which one? The, his, do you know the name of his other talk show he's doing right now? No. Mm-mm. The George Lucas talk show where he dresses up like George Lucas. I mean, look. <laughs> again, guy, a funny concept. Again, again. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, at some point you realize he's never going to talk to Tom Hanks. Oh. He's, he's, well, but I, I like I the idea of a stunt podcast as a way to ultimately have an interview with Tom Hanks, right? That's all that this is really designed for right well, here's what it tickles it tickles the exact same spot as uh f- remember how finding richard simmons uh was really good and then clearly some lawyers talk to people mm-hmm. and then like suddenly the show is just over and they're all like yeah richard simmons is fine bye and then that was the end of it <laughs> yeah imagine that but just just more bitter <laughs> and and forever and you never get to the part where you find richard simmons <laughs> I got it. I got it. I'm sending you a clip right now, Bryce. Okay. Um, <laughs> you got to see this. This is this guy. <laughs> well, and Justin should sue. It, uh, um, yeah. But oh, we wait for that. It reminds me of uh, the, the, the McElroys had a podcast called The McElroy Brothers Will Be in Trolls 3. And yeah. it, it was a podcast dedicated to them making enough noise until they did actually get cast in the movie Trolls 3. That's amazing. That's very funny. <laughs> so we've got a clip here from the George Lucas talk show. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Come to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum on Wednesday, November 13th to see the George Lucas talk show. It's a show where I, retired filmmaker George Lucas... Not even a great interview. George Lucas impression? <laughs> Doing two fascinating Give it, let it go. about science, about our world, and the world of imagination that I have created. <laughs> and we'll see where those two worlds might overlap. My guests will include NASA's Steve Howell, exoplanet researcher and astrophysicist. He's a hyphenate. Natalia Reagan is a primatologist and comedian. I'm a writer, director, producer. This is true. NASA's Kepler telescope has found a planet that is almost identical to Tatooine. <laughs> so who can say what's fact and fiction? We're gonna get to the bottom of it. If there's a real Tatooine, then it stands to reason that there could be Jawas. If I got one thing right, who's to say how many things I got right? There could be a spaceport that's a hive of scum and villainy. The George Lucas talk show at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Let me give you the, should I give the address? Can we scroll them? Where they, they, that looks great. That's a good special effect. <laughs> it's a Star Wars <laughs> scroll. <laughs> Wednesday, November 13th. Uh, so, uh, I, he is obviously brilliant. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm curious, more curious now than ever to listen to that podcast or see. I mean, I'm, I'm almost done with like three years of it. I, I just got started and I, and I couldn't stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought this was like a recent thing. Yes, it was this week. <laughs> like <laughs> the podcast just came out this week, or the podcast has been out for three. Years? It got on my radar gotcha. this week, and and I have consumed a, 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 a twice a month for three years of content. Oh wow, goodness! Yeah. So um, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna do a pick. Uh, I think, and I'll probably put this on my Twitter. Is if you're interested in. We talked a lot about Facebook and VR, et cetera. If you look up the book, The History of the Future, and I've mentioned this book before by Blake Harris, 
and I think it is a fantastic, really, really well done story. Blake J. Harris, they fit, and it's all about Facebook and Oculus and how they acquired it and the story behind that and the machinations there. Uh, uh, Palmer Lucky, everything kind of going on there. A lot of the players that are still at Facebook now and working on Oculus. So um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, awesome. So, and it's got great reviews, by the way, too. Um, it's, you know, it's uh, 4.6 out of 5 stars out of 366 reviews. And to do something in tech about a topic that controversial like that, that's great. Blake did Console War Wars, too, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Very cool. So nice. that's my pick. So, hey, gentlemen, this has been awesome. And it's been weird. Pew. Pew. All righty. Hey, that's going to do it for weird things. We are actually going to, uh, I believe we're going to end our stream there today. We're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, pass on after things today because of some scheduling stuff. Uh, we will be back oh, in a couple somebody's hours. Somebody's bad at scheduling. My, my fault. Uh, we will be back in a, no, me, me. <laughs> oh, uh, we will be back in about three hours for cord killers. We got Chris Mancini and of course, Tom Merritt and Brian Brushwood Heck yeah. and everybody on that show. So check that out here in a little bit at Andrew Maine, at Schwood, at Brickus. Uh, tomorrow also, by the way, tomorrow, we will not be doing a live great night. We have pre-recorded the episode cause Justin is out of town. I will be streaming. See We'll see it. We'll see you, Andrew. Go, go do your thing. Uh, I'll stream out the, the episode that we recorded. It's audio only. Um, but uh, we'll do that at about the normal time. So tune in. We'll still we'll still give you a little bit of something there. Uh, until then, bye everybody. Love you.